GoFundMe has frozen the gray zones assets that were raised through GoFundMe. Now you'd think legally when you raise money on a platform like GoFundMe or a Kickstarter or whichever ones are still out there, uh, you'd think that legally those are yours, that you now own those because people donated the money to you. You'd think it's legally yours, but apparently that's not the case. And GoFundMe has yet again stolen the assets, stolen the money of an independent media outlet or an independent journalist. And this is the latest example. The Silicon Valley-based crowdfunding site GoFundMe has informed the gray zone that it has frozen all money, which was $90,000, raised in our recent fundraiser, quote, due to some external concerns. Yeah, were the external concerns that you fucking work for the corporate U.S. state and they're concerned that gray zone as well as other outlets are revealing the truth and the crimes of the corporate U.S. state. Was that the external concern that you had? Was that worrying you over at GoFundMe? Our initiative to continue from the gray zone article was devoted to providing independent journalists Wyatt Reed, Kit Clarenberg and Alex Rubenstein with long term positions. By the way, two or three of the, two of those three, I, I often use their work on, on this show to uh, convey to you what's actually going on in the world. And two of those three have been under attack by the U.S. or U.S. vassal states. Uh, I do know Alex as well. I'm not sure whether they've gone after his uh, funding recently. But Wyatt, yeah, as you recall, oh, actually, I had him on for an interview to talk about it. I forgot about that. But uh, Wyatt went to Ukraine and they bombed his hotel. His hotel was hit with a bomb and it was a hotel that was known to house Western journalists and likely they knew that he was there. Now, whether they were going after him specifically or just going after Western journalists in general, I don't think he knows that. But he was about 100 yards away. He was walking back to the hotel when a mortar hit the, essentially the front door of the hotel. And uh, I played that video. I also then interviewed him about that. Kit Clarenberg, uh, I covered how he was arrested. That, that was the guy I was talking about, how he was arrested by the UK police when he arrived. Uh, that's his home country, by the way. Um, or I guess not now. I think he lives maybe in the United States now, but he at least is from Britain. And uh, he arrived in London and they arrested him at the airport and kept him for five hours, which is the max under UK law that you can hold someone without bringing charges against them but he had they had nothing against him so they just held him for five hours and yelled at him that he was working with russia when he's not um obviously they wouldn't have released him if they had any proof of anything so they just they're like well we get to berate you for five hours let's do that and i think they actually kept his maybe they kept his laptop and phone and stuff to continue from the article, when we demanded to know why GoFundMe had refused to authorize the transfer of funds that we had raised, we got this email from someone named Sabrina. Our number one goal, said Sabrina, our number one goal here is ensuring that the money from GoFundMe fundraisers always gets to the right place. You think you would think that right place, side note, you'd think that right place would be in the hands of those who have just been donated to the hands of those having the fundraiser. That seems like it's probably, you know, call me crazy. I've never created a crowdfunding site, but I think that sounds like the right place. That sounds like where it should go, considering you have a thousand people donating to that place. Uh, but no, that's not what she says. She, uh, she continues. So we really appreciate you helping us to make sure GoFundMe is a safe place to give. And... <laughs> Again, another side note on her little email here. Apparently, the way you're helping them make sure that GoFundMe is a safe place to give is by letting them steal tens of thousands of dollars. That's how you're letting them be a good place. To continue from her four-sentence email, three-sentence email, uh, due to some external concerns, we need to review your fundraiser to make sure it complies with our terms of service. Please keep in mind that our processes are followed to ensure your own safety. I'll keep you updated. 
to ensure your own safety. Have you ever had that happen where you have someone steal money from you and as they're stealing it with a gun pointed at your head, taking your wallet, they go, this is for your own safety, okay? This is for your own good, man. I just wanted to make, because who knows what you would have done with that money. You might have funded a journalism outlet that uh, reveals America's crimes, and we can't have that. So we're doing this for your own safety. So that was their email to Gray Zone, and they have not responded to any other requests for information or anything else. And Gray Zone, I think, believes this money will ultimately be completely stolen, and I think they're going off what has been done to other uh, outlets such as Mint Press, where Mint Press, where I worked for nine, 10 months, um, Mint Press had their money, uh, had their GoFundMe shut down, and I think at least some of their funds stolen. Um, and there's other examples which I'm about to get into, but um, they so Grey's Under raised over $90,000. GoFundMe is holding the donations hostage, refusing to transfer them to us while failing to inform donors that it effectively seized their money. So they're not even telling the over a thousand donors, a thousand contributors, that their money has been stolen. You'd think they'd all, at, at minimum would be obligated to send you. Sabrina could get to work sending some emails to those thousand contributors and saying, hey, we at GoFundMe have decided to actually just steal your money. So just letting you know, but it's for your own safety. So don't worry, it's for your own safety. While failing to inform donors, uh, so the article continues, the for-profit site has similarly refused to explain its freezing of donations. Kit Clarenberg, who would have also been provided with a staff position thanks to our fundraiser, was detained and interrogated for his investigative reporting for the gray zone at, uh, oh, sorry, Luton International Airport. I thought it was uh, Heathrow. But. Then there was the Ukrainian SBU security services effort to ban the gray zone's Aaron Mate from Twitter. According to a series of internal Twitter emails provided to Mate, the SBU enlisted the FBI to pressure Twitter into banning him and a long list of accounts from its platform on the grounds that they were suspected by the SBU in spreading fear and disinformation. However, Twitter ultimately raised concerns about censoring American and Canadian journalists and rejected the request to ban Mate. So the FBI and Ukraine's intelligence service, SBU, had asked Twitter to ban Aaron Mate. He's also the co-host of Useful Idiots. Uh, the gray zone continues. Whoever is responsible, we are clearly witnessing the work of the censorship industrial complex. I've covered that on this show before, which was heavily talked about with the Twitter files as it seeks to financially blockade the American and British journalists who have thoroughly dis uh, disrupted their own government's official narrative. On February 5th, 2022, GoFundMe arbitrarily canceled a fundraiser for the Canadian Freedom Convoy protesting the Canadian government's COVID-19 vaccine mandate. You'll remember uh, when that happened, when they just stole the funds of many involved in that. GoFundMe canceled a fundraiser for the Jitsan uh, First Nation, sorry if I'm pronouncing that wrong, an indigenous tribe blockading a rail line traversing its land in British Columbia. So their funds were stolen. GoFundMe has also arbitrarily removed the fundraising campaigns of the anti-war alternative media at Mint Press and banned the website from its platform without explanation. So there you have it, the latest attacks to go after the funding of those of us who are anti-war, anti-imperialist. Um, I was a target. It didn't end up happening, uh, but... I was a target of a similar campaign to stop me from being able to receive contributions or donations from those of you who keep this show going. And that's how I ended up initially uh, on Locals, where I am now. Locals has a no censorship uh, uh, mission statement. Um, but I was initially on Patreon. And at that same time, when I started Patreon after my show was canceled. So, of course, I had all that censorship as well. TV show canceled, uh, entire network shut down, everything on YouTube canceled, banned globally. Everything on uh, my podcast uh, on Spotify was deleted and banned globally. Now, now the Spotify podcast is called The Lee Camp Show. It's back up. Um, but after all that happened, I started a Patreon. But in that same month when I started it, 
the Daily Beast, which is part of this whole complex to go after us, to go after anyone who's anti-war, to go after anyone who reveals the crimes of the U.S. Uh, inverted totalitarianist state, to totalitarian, I guess, state. I didn't have to add ist. But um, Daily Beast did a whole article where they went after actually Max as well, Blumenthal, uh, Gray Zone, but went after me and Max and a few others. And part of the article was specifically going at Patreon, telling Patreon to shut us down. And Patreon had already shut down the accounts of a few journalists, I think maybe far right, but it, again, it doesn't really matter which one it was. It's the idea of we're going to stop people from using our platforms uh, when they are speaking things that we don't particularly like. So they had already proven they would do that, delete people's Patreon. So I didn't want to build up a platform where for all I knew, it was going to be deleted. And the Daily Beast was efforting Patreon, trying to get them to delete my Patreon and others. And so I just, rather than wait and watch it all get shut down, I said, fuck this, going to locals. So that's why I have LeeCamp.Locals.com, where also it's a much better community where we can interact and everything like that. But so that's the latest one. And as you can see, this is not like a one-off. This is like an ongoing drumbeat of attack on those of us who reveal the crimes of the U.S. war state. It is a, a, a steady, a steady attack. Uh, well, some of it's just to scare people, like the arrest of Kit Clarenberg. I mean, maybe they thought they were going to find something on him, but I think the goal is just to make life difficult, uh, to make it tough to keep doing his work. I mean, even when they release him after five hours, whether they stole his laptop or not, these are these are humans. I know a lot of people think that, you know, maybe not me because I'm just a fucking comedian. Who knows what the fuck I'm doing? But uh, I think some people think that these journalists, especially the ones that are silly some of the time, uh, are like superhuman and that that type of thing doesn't affect them. Who You know, if someone tells them to to stop reporting the truth. They'll never do it. And it's like, but you go after people's money and they can't earn a living. You go after people's security and you arrest them. And even if they end up getting out, you know, you go after them in just like a myriad of different ways. Many of them do back off. Many of them do uh, uh, stop doing the reporting. So in a way it's, yes, it's on a lot of us to, I guess, be brave in this sense, but it's on a lot of those of you who support this kind of journalism to keep supporting it um, and and making sure that we can keep doing this work. Luckily, I have a platform that the kind of anti-censorship is their whole thing with locals uh, and, and, and Rumble. But, uh, you know, my other platforms, I don't know when they'll get, they could get shut down. I have a Facebook that's heavily shadow banned, but it could get shut down. I have a Twitter that's fairly shadow banned, but it could get shut down. So, you know, you got to build up the alternatives while this is going on. But, you know, all of this is to say that you you know you're you know you're speaking the truth when they're going after you like this. If if the gray zone was just reporting lies all the time, it wouldn't have nearly the impact. It's having this impact. And Mint Press, where I worked, and others, it's having this impact because it's the fucking truth. It's the fucking truth coming out of these outlets, talking about the 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 endless wars of the U.S. state, talking about the endless economic wars, talking about the, the, the destruction of our environment and our way of life by these fucking sociopaths that run the systems. It's the truth. And if it weren't, if it weren't true, it'd just be so much easier to just debunk it all. Like it, it wouldn't be threatening at all.